Welcome back to ACING AP Biology. In this lesson, we will continue our discussion of membrane transport, reviewing active transport. Recall that in active transport, substances move against their concentration gradient, moving from a low concentration to a high concentration. Active transport therefore requires an input of energy in the form of ATP. Ion pumps are also known as electrogenetic pumps because they generate voltage across the membrane due to ions being charged particles. The sodium-potassium pump only exists in animal cells. It requires one-third of all the cells ATP. The membrane potential at rest is negative 70 millivolts. When this potential changes, the sodium-potassium pump is used to get back to resting membrane potential of negative 70 millivolts. The process starts with the pump facing the inside of the cell. When it faces the inside, it has a high affinity for the sodium ion, and its formation changes so that it's specific to the sodium ion. When the three sodium ions bind to the carrier protein, the phosphorylation of ATP is stimulated as ATP breaks down into ADP and an inorganic phosphate. When the inorganic phosphate binds to the pump, it sparks another conformation change where the pump's affinity is greater for potassium and less for sodium. So the sodium ions are released to the outside and two potassium ions are picked up. Once the potassium ions bind to the pump, the phosphate is released and the affinity for potassium ions decreases, leading to its release on the inside of the cell. Then the cycle begins again. So three sodium ions are pumped out and two potassium ions are pumped in, which is why the membrane potential is negative. The proton pump is a major pump in plants. It functions in transporting sucrose in plants by creating a proton motive force, pumping hydrogen ions against their concentration gradient. We will talk about this more in the next slide. Now let's talk about co-transport. Co-transport occurs when one ATP powered pump actively transports one solute and at the same time transports another solute indirectly. A good example of co-transport is the sucrose hydrogen ion co-transporter in plants. Plants use this to get sucrose in their cells. The proton pump uses ATP to pump hydrogen ions against their concentration gradient. This creates a proton motive force, stimulating the diffusion of hydrogen ions back across the membrane. To do this, it binds to the sucrose hydrogen ion co-transporter, and sucrose binds along with it. So essentially, sucrose gets a free ride into the cell due to the proton pump. Bulk transport involves the transport of large solutes. There are two types of bulk transport, exocytosis and endocytosis. Exocytosis is the secretion of large molecules out of the cell through the fusion of vesicles with the plasma membrane. In this process, the size of the plasma membrane increases due to the vesicle fusion with the plasma membrane. Endocytosis imports large solutes into the cell. The importation occurs when a vesicle pinches off the plasma membrane and enters the cytoplasm. 
the size of the plasma membrane decreases in this process. There are three types of endocytosis, phagocytosis, penocytosis, and receptor-mediated endocytosis. Phagocytosis is known as cellular eating. It is the endocytosis of solid particles as the cell engulfs the large solute. A pseudopodium forms as the plasma membrane invaginates in, surrounding the food particle. Once the vesicle pinches off, it is known as a food vacuole. The food vacuole then fuses with the lysosome, where it is broken down by hydrolytic enzymes. Penocytosis is known as cellular drinking. It is the endocytosis of fluid droplets, where the cell engulfs solutes dissolved in a, in a liquid droplet. This is a nonspecific process. The plasma membrane pinches inward and forms a coated pit. Once the vesicle pinches off completely, it forms a coated vesicle holding the dissolved solutes. Receptor-mediated endocytosis is a very specific process. First, an extracellular substance, known as a ligand, binds to a receptor outside the cell specific to it. Once the binding takes place, the plasma membrane begins to pinch inward, forming a coated pit holding the receptor and the ligand. Once it pinches off completely, a coated vesicle forms in a clathrin cage. Clathrin is a fibrous protein that deepens the pit of the vesicle and strengthens it. Once the receptors and ligands are released from the vesicle, the receptors are recycled and move back to the plasma membrane, waiting for another ligand to bind. Cholesterol uses this process to enter cells. That's it for active transport. We will move on to cell signaling in the next video. See you then. For more bio content, hit subscribe.